let's talk about side to side VPN and direct connect. Let's first understand why we need a solution like this, what we are trying to achieve from it. Now, sometimes customer may not be into the cloud completely, but they may be operating a hybrid cloud setup. What is this hybrid cloud setup? The setup basically says that you would have some component running in AWS environment and maybe remaining component would still be running your on premises. So let me write it down here. This is your AWS environment and this one is your on prem environment. Plus in AWS environment, you would have VPCs and in that VPC, you would have your servers running. So that is completely possible that this is my VPC here and Chances are that maybe you hosted some of the component of your application into cloud. Let's say a hybrid solution may look like we have a web server into cloud and then we have the database still running on premises. That is a hybrid distributed architecture. Or you could say I would be having a application running on prem, but once this backups are performed, I want these backups to be retained into let's say Glacier or Amazon S3. So I want to have a communication from on-prem every day to transfer data to AWS because I'm I'm taking backup every day. So whatever your use case is, whether you are expanding your application or where you are temporarily storing some data or permanently, you, what you would need, you would need a connectivity to be established from your VPC up to your on-prem environment. So we are focusing here on this connectivity option. Connectivity can be established either through something called direct connect. We will talk about that or it can be established through a VPN. When to use which one, I'll talk in detail about it. But depending on your use case, you would set up a connectivity. Now, whether you use direct connect or whether you use VPN, you would be needing some component. One component which you would be needing on your on-prem side would be some network device. Let me just call it a router. This would be the interface by which your communication would be established or communication would be received. So you would need a router at your end and on the AWS side, you would be needing a component which is called VGW, which stand for Virtual Private Gateway. So Basically, these two component will talk to each other and that would establish a channel on which all the communication would be happening. Either you set up it through direct connect or through VPN, but VGW would be required on AWS side and on prem side, you would be requiring a physical device probably who would initiate or accept the connection request when it comes in. So keep this picture at back of your mind and let's go ahead and see different options which we can use. We'll talk about them one by one. So hope everyone remembers this diagram. So we have set up our infrastructure, our VPC is set up and my application setting is done, routing is configured. Now what I'm looking for, I am looking to expand my network to the on-prem environment, okay? So we'll go to on-prem environment now. How? We would need a component on our side, which is called Virtual Private Gateway VGW. And from this, we would establish an on-prem network. That on-prem network can be set up through Direct Connect or it can be set up through VPN. What is the difference between them? I'll explain that through analogy so that you could relate to it. Now, if you look here, Direct Connect is showing you like you have a direct path here. And that is completely true that what we are seeing here, there is a complete, complete direct connection happening from your VPC up to on-prem network and purely, purely it is a private connectivity. When I say private, it means that it is not leveraging the public internet. It is a channel which has been created for you on which only your traffic is going. Whereas if I'm talking about a VPN connection, I have created it like this in which the idea here is that it is using public network. It is sending traffic over public internet and then sending data to on-prem network. The easiest example to understand this would be to take an analogy here. Consider you have to go from point A to point B. One option for you is you could take a commercial flight, right? 
Commercial flight is operated by different service provider, different airline and then you can just book a ticket or maybe two for whatever you are doing and then you could board the flight and go from point A to point B. This setup was already there. What we use here, there was a public way of commuting from one place to another place and we just used it on for our work. That is your commercial flight. This one here is representing a site to site VPN. What we did here, we have set up our site to site VPN. We booked the ticket, we boarded the flight and we reached from point A to point B. That simple. Very easy to do. No complications here. Very effective in cost, right? But this is a public network. I don't expect that VIPs would be traveling like this, maybe like a president of a country or maybe a very big minister or very big business tycoon. They may not be leveraging this option. They may be looking for something which is more exclusive, which is a private jet. And why? Because private jet will give them some flexibility because they can schedule whatever time they want to go. They can maybe take a stopover in some other country if the need be. Commercial flight won't do that. And they would have exclusive control on when the aircraft flies and where it lands and where it goes. So that is your private jet. Consider that as your direct connect. Now, this will give you a lot of control, right? But obviously, there is a huge cost to have a private jet. Commercial flight, when you are taking, the cost is much cheaper comparatively, but you are leveraging here a public network, and this one here is your private network by which you are sending traffic. Right. Let me go ahead and talk about each of these details in much detailed fashion so that you would have a better idea on differences between them, how it actually works. So let's discuss things one by one. Let's first talk about use case. Why, when I would use site to site VPN and when I would use direct connect, let me read it out for you. Use case for site to site VPN is connecting remote network to AWS VPC, which doesn't require heavy data transfer or doesn't require a consistent connection. Sometimes you may not need 24 by 7 connectivity. Or even if you need a 24 by 7 connectivity from your on-prem and AWS, from on-prem to AWS, maybe you do not have huge data to be transferred. It may be a small amount of data like a keep alive or a heartbeat or some signal which you want to transfer. So in that type of cases, site to site VPN is a much better choice. This is my internet connection and we will just use this for sending information. So when you do not have heavy data transfer, when you do not require a consistent connection to be available every time, probably you would use site to site VPN. If either of this is true, when you need a heavy data transfer to happen or you need a consistent connection on a regular basis or I would say 24 by 7 basis, that time a direct connect is a better option for you because it is a consistent connection and which is always, always present and that would give you a better approach to a data transfer. So if cost is important, use site to site VPN because you do not require additional setup in terms of getting a communication done with a service provider or an internet company and then get your direct connect set up. This one is a very easy to set up thing. Cost is important. I just want to transfer data. Do not want to invest so much money. Go ahead with site to site VPN. Direct connect. When you need predictable performance, you have some data transfer job which has to be completed within some time frame or you require that you should always have this much of bandwidth available for your data transfer that time you would be leveraging a direct connect connection because site to site VPN is doing what it is transferring your data over internet. Now internet, yes, we expect it to perform as, a, as speedy as possible, but it is not always predictable performance because technically your data goes from multiple ISPs and then reaches to destination. So that's why you may not get a predictable performance on internet connections and that's why site to site VPN which is sitting on top of internet connection may not be uh, giving you the right amount of service level agreement you are looking for. Right. Next is supported use case sorry supported speed. VPN by default gives you 1.25 GBPS tunnel. How it is implemented? 
so there would be two connections point right one is on aws side another is on your on prem side on on prem side you would have some routing device let's call it router and on prem on aws side you would have your vgw now there is a tunnel established between vgw and router this tunnel can give you 1.25 gbps of traffic this much data transfer can happen on it but in case of direct connect you could ask for a direct connect in speed of 1 10 or even 100 gbps on supported location these are the standard offering but sometime what service providers do that your internet service provider your network service providers they could go ahead and give you a sub 1 gbps connection minimum 50 mbps connection can also be given depending on that service provider offers that kind of a connection so this is dependent on a service provider how it works let's go ahead and talk about it so uh side to side vpn establishes a tunnel over existing internet connection direct connect establishes a connect over a dedicated network doesn't use internet let me draw how this direct connect is actually established for you now this is your on prem and let's say this side is aws you want connectivity now you have to select a direct connect location let's say let's say i am in london and i have selected let's say british telecom as my direct connect provider or i want to use their connection to reach to aws so what british telecom would have they have let's say agreement with aws so aws would set up aws rack or which is called aws cage on a bt location and that is connected on to aws global network right plus what bt would do bt would help you to get you on to this network so bt would have their own cage own server rack own network rack and when you say you need a direct connect connection bt would establish british telecom would establish a connectivity from their network up to your on premises network sometime people also call it a last mile connection so that last mile connection is set up by bt for you and once aws approves your direct connect connection and bt establishes the physical connectivity then a link will be added from here to here where your your network equipment is residing your means leased by bt for you so once this network connectivity is established what would happen any traffic you want to send would follow this path will go through this network and then reach out to your destination that's how your direct connect is set so you would need to talk to a service provider that service provider would help you in getting the physical connectivity sorted and once that is done aws will approve your connection and afterwards you should be able to utilize that particular connection so that is how a direct connect actually works right in case of site to site vpn you just need to set up a vpn connection and you do not need any service provider because you already have internet at your location that's all so that is much easier much faster but direct connect may require you to talk to service provider and then get it ready so that is what i am rep rep representing here is it site to site vpn establishes tunnel over existing internet connection direct connect establishes the connectivity over a dedicated network it doesn't use internet at all in terms of high availability site to site vpn is highly available on the aws side what we mean by aws side so there is a connection setting for aws sorry connection point in aws side that we call a vgw so whenever a vgw is established it gives you two endpoints two ip addresses to connect to one will be coming from aza and another ip which is there is coming from azb so idea here is that once your connection is established even if one of the az fails your vpn would still be connected and you would still be able to perform all the operations because it is highly available on the aws side why i'm saying only aws side because this side is your router if you want better 
high availability probably you should set up one more router but that is customer discretion customer may want to set it up may not want to and once you set this thing up then you may leverage a highly available architecture on your site so vgw is by default deployed across to az direct connect on the other hand is a single connection so maybe you have set up a direct connect by a service provider let's say called bt it is one single channel given to you though it is of 1 10 or 100 gbps speed but it is one single channel right in case this service provider has some issues or your cable has some issues then your connectivity would be lost so this is a single connection what you could do if you want you could augment it with a site to site vpn also as a backup or as a standby so if you feel hey i always need connectivity and connectivity is more important than speed so let me set up a vpn also but i will use vpn as only standby and leverage the main connection for all the regular traffic so that is there but by default direct connect is a single connection and there is no high availability in that another difference here in which sometimes confuses people is about encryption as vpn are using internet and their security becomes very paramount and that's why vpn in aws would be using ipsec security protocol ip security protocol ipsec it is called for any communication end to end encryption would be provided by ipsec on case of direct connect encryption is not there by default there are ways to enable it if you want it there is a new feature now available with some port types but not by default there so you may have to set it up on your own if you want because direct connect is considering physical security or physical separation of your data rather than just putting a tunnel on a public network so that's why direct connects are not by default encrypted time to set up site to site vpn can be set up in few minutes in a self service fashion i can go to console set up my end of my aws end of networking i go to my customer site or my on prem data center set up the router there and can just establish a tunnel no problem at all on that so maybe in few minutes i can set things up but in case of direct connect as you have to go through a service provider and get approval from aws first that may take some hours or probably some days to get established right last point here is about cost to dimension site to site vpn you pay per connection hour how long you keep your connection running so that is a good solution if you want to start your connection only in morning to do initial data transfer and then in evening you again do another data transfer so that is a good way where you pay only for connection hour and you also obviously pay the data transfer out charges direct connect will have variable port fees depending on the speed depending on the service provider depending on the sla service level agreement they are offering you so there would be variable port fees and obviously data transfer out charges would be applied on that so hopefully this has given you a better idea on site to site vpn versus direct connect what i have also included is the service summary cards so in the resource section you can find this slide where i have explained you about site to site vpn when where who and some pricing dimension and then i have added similar stuff for direct connect connection too so read this information keep it handy for your exam preparation to understand what these two services are i hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something new let's meet into next section and we'll discuss more interesting stuff thank you